All right. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome um, to Let's Talk Kindergarten. It's great to see everybody. My name is Katie Starr, and I use she, her pronouns, and I'm Program Coordinator of Community Initiatives at Durham's Partnership for Children. My name is Courtney Kelly, my pronouns, I'm she and hers, and I am the Family Engagement Specialist at Durham's Partnership for Children. Yeah, well, Anna is the Family Engagement Assistant and she will be providing Spanish interpretation throughout the night. So um, this session will be um, held in English and Spanish. Uh, but before we start, um, we want to make sure that everyone um, is listening to the event in their preferred language. Uh, so at the bottom of your screen, you will see a globe. Um, you can click on the interpretation globe and then select your preferred language, whether it's English or Spanish. Um, and we do have some helpful photos over here on the side to guide you. Would you like for me to, if Anna is not? Yes, if you could. I don't I think she's already in the Spanish channel. So. Buenas noches. La reunión de hoy se está ofreciendo interpretación de inglés al español. Así de que en sus pantallas van a encontrar un globo y ustedes pueden seleccionar el lenguaje que ustedes prefieran esta noche. Gracias. Thank you, Mercedes. Uh, so this session will be uh, recorded and shared on Durham's Partnership for Children um, social media platforms and our website. Um, by registering, you are con you did consent to um, be recorded, but if you don't feel comfortable with your camera on, feel free to turn it off. But we do want you to participate with us tonight and engage to make this a fun event. Please remain muted while the session is in progress. Uh, you can ask questions by typing them in the chat box. We will have a Q&A uh, at the end as well. Also, a poll will populate at the beginning and end of the session. Um, your feedback is extremely valuable to us. So grab a piece of paper and a pen. You will need that later. And let's get started. Just to make sure, though, Mercedes, mm -hmm. Anna, are you there yet? I saw you pop back in the meeting. Mercedes, would you mind again just giving the rundown of I'm um, selecting their preferred language? Absolutely. Buenas noches, bienvenidos a todos. Por favor, eh, seleccionen su idioma, eh, el idioma del hogar. Entonces, abajo en la pantalla hay un globito que dice inglés o español. Seleccionen su idioma de preferencia. Gracias. Thank you. Great, so you can see the agenda for the evening. We'll go over goals, a grounding activity, go through the transition to kindergarten initiative, hear from amazing community partners, and then have time for um, all you all to ask questions um, at the end. So, great. Uh, so like we said, we're really grateful for you all to be here. Um, the goals of the event are for you all to learn what tools um, you can use for self and community care uh, to provide you all with information about DPS kindergarten registration and to connect you all with community resources that will support your child's literacy and positive racial identity development. So last thing before we get started, um, we are going to launch a pre-survey just to rate your knowledge about the programs that are presenting tonight. So hopefully you can see a poll pop up. And if you need yes, to the poll has it now, yes. It's there, great, <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to check.
Keep it coming, there's looking good. I guess we can leave it open for about one more minute. Looks like over half have completed. All right, about 15 more seconds. All right, thank you for that. All right. Great, so just to get grounded in this space tonight, I thought we could start off just with a little activity together. Um, and so this is a quick and easy thing. And so I just want to welcome everybody to get comfortable, sit wherever you all are. And um, yeah, first, I think just go through five things you can see. And so after each of these, um, give you about 20 seconds. So just five things you can see around the space. Four things you can touch. And maybe three things you can hear around you. And two things that you can maybe smell where you are. And lastly, one thing that you can taste right now in this moment. Great. So thank you all for doing that with me. It was usually just a quick activity can do. Um, a great tool to use when you just want to feel centered in your body, feel centered in the moment. Um, but I know Courtney and Anna and I are curious on other tools um, that your kids, your families, what you have been using for kind of community or self-care and we'd love for you all to share those tools in the chat. Um, so we'd love, we'd love to see what folks, what have been working for, for you all. So feel free to have that, um, to enter that in. See some morning meditation, weekly baths, grounding in nature. So nature walks. Mm. Walks around the Eno. These are great. <laughs> the Eno is life. Mm. I love to ask the kindergartners, what is making you really happy today? These are beautiful. Yeah, it looks like we're yeah, just taking that time to take care of ourselves, our families and our friends and our community. I love it. So thank you all for participating in this with us. All right. So just to give you um, history on Durham's Transition to Kindergarten Initiative, um, the Transition to Kindergarten sets the tone for the child's entire educational experience. Um, it is a collaboration between Durham's Partnership for Children and Durham Public Schools. It builds connections that prepare students, uh, parents, and children um, for successful transition and future school success. 
Historically, we have uh, worked with several organizations and volunteers to host kindergarten programs, uh, such as Kindergarten Registration Week, Last Off to Kindergarten, uh, Popsicles on the Playground, and Kick Off to Kindergarten. Uh, all of these events uh, give children and families an opportunity to meet school staff, to tour the school, uh, receive resources, and participate in teacher-led kindergarten activities and meet their future classmates. So with that, we would love for our first presenter um, to start us off tonight. So you'll be hearing from Durham Public Schools and I believe Sue, um, I will pass it off to you. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Thank you. Let me try that again. Um, good evening, everyone. We're so happy you're here to learn about the kindergarten programs in Durham Public Schools. I'm Suzanne Cotterman. I am the director for the Office of Early Education, and um, you will meet some of my colleagues during this presentation as well. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. This slide showcases information about our schools, our student teacher ratios, and student demographic information. Every day, over 4,000 DPS staff are serving approximately 31,000 students who are enrolled in our 54 schools. Durham is a diverse county that is evident in all of our schools. Our students have an array of talents, abilities, and needs. In Durham Public Schools, we are continuously using our many resources to help our students succeed. Next slide, please. So why choose Durham Public Schools? Well, this slide shows some of our district's recent achievements that are points of pride for Durham Public Schools. Um, this is merely a snapshot of the great things that are happening every day in our schools. Your child will be a part of a progressive and an innovative district. Next slide, please. The schools has much to offer for our children. Um, our teachers use a variety of instructional techniques and approaches because we know children differently. Uh, we also realize that this may be some children's first experience in a classroom. And for other children, you know, they're quite familiar with a classroom format. So we want to make sure that we are there for both sets of children. Uh, we want to make sure each child feels safe and nurtured in that the children build relationships and friendships with adults and their peers. We want to make sure children have a strong academic foundation and also ensure that children build good social and emotional skills because that's also very important. The habits that a child develops in kindergarten are the foundation for their lifelong learning. Next slide, please. Thank you. This slide shows you the five priorities of our strategic plan. Educators, students, parents, and community members came together to create this plan and it guides our daily work. Um, this plan was created in January of 2020. Additional addendum strategies were developed that provided additional focus on pre-K, special education, counselors, English as a second language, career and technical education, and multilingual support. While we've always focused on these priorities, we can't accomplish our goals without support from the community. We've developed a comprehensive plan that ensures the best education for all of our students. Next slide, please. And with this, I will turn it over to Ms. or Dr. DeWalt, and she will walk you through the curriculum pieces. Hey everyone, I am Lo DeWalt. I am the K-5 School Programs and Literacy Integration Coordinator. And so looking at that strategic plan, I'm gonna be talking really about priorities one and two, thinking about academics and then how curriculum and instruction supports um, the, whole, your whole the whole child model. So in Durham, children receive a comprehensive holistic education that crosses across disciplines and that follows the North Carolina standard course of study at each grade level. So the North Carolina standard course of study was developed by educators from across the state 
um, which means that your student, your child will get experiences in language arts, math, science, and social studies, as you might expect, but also in arts education, like um, dance and theater at some schools, visual arts and music, um, also as a one-to-one -one district through informational technology, and then with a really strong focus on the social and emotional learning for your student uh, through guidance and healthful living. Next slide, please. I'm gonna put in the chat here a link um, if you are interested in really diving deep and reading kind of exactly what um, the standards are for kindergarten, you are welcome to look at this quick reference guide. It was produced by um, the Department of, Ed of Instruction um, in Raleigh. And so it covers everything that your student will learn in kindergarten. And I'm just gonna give you a kind of a broad overview of it. But if you wanna dive deep, that is a great resource for parents. Go ahead and go to the next slide, please. Thanks. So in a kindergarten curriculum in Durham Public Schools, your um, child's literacy experience will be rooted in the science of reading. So some of our schools use the American Reading Company program, while others use what, um, HMH's adopted curriculum. But what either curriculum, regardless of which um, your particular child's school is using, is rooted in the science of reading, meaning that your student will have strong foundations in print concepts, letter sounds, letter recognitions, word patterns, that they can become strong readers and writers to share um, their expression and themselves with the world. And the way we do that is through independent practice, modeling from teachers and guided strategies. In math, we use those same um, gradual release model but the focus, of course, is on developing number sense and reasoning with um, the conceptual approach. So in both math and in ELA, your child's teacher will use both informal and formal assessments or tests to help better understand what exactly your child needs um, to individualize their instruction and continue to help them grow as critical thinkers, readers, and writers and thinkers. I mentioned this earlier, but we do have a one-to-one -one technology in Durham Public Schools that we are very proud of. And so your child will also receive um, a balance of hands-on practice, um, really engaging tactilely, and also um, using the technology to enhance their learning, as, as well as integrating science with literacy and making sure that they're doing those fun hands-on science experiments um, throughout the day. Next slide, please. So this is slide shows a typical day in kindergarten. It might look different school to school, um, but all schools generally kind of follow a similar, a similar program with time for whole group learning, small group learning, and individualized learning where your child gets independent practice. Almost every kindergarten class starts out with a morning meeting to help build community among their peers and to give them uh, some of the social and emotional support as well as um, some really playtime with their classmates. Uh, so that picture there is a girl leading her class's morning meeting. Um, and then throughout the day, in addition to their subject areas, Durham Public Schools also provides lunch and breakfast there are plenty of brain breaks for your kindergartner to move and be active because we know that five-year-olds have a lot of energy and they need to get that out during the day. Um, and then specials occurs at every school. The time frame is, is slightly different, but all children get to experience art and music, um, time with their counselors and time in the library. Next slide, please. So in order for our students to be successful inside and outside the classroom, we know that those um, social and emotional skills are really crucial to their development and growth. Um, all of our schools have counselors, social workers, psychologists, um, as well as teachers um, who are trained to make sure that your child is supported throughout the school day and to use research-based strategies to support their, their mental health, their character development, and most importantly, their safety. That, I'm going to pass it off to Ms. Thompson.
or perhaps back to Sue. It's me, sorry, I was on mute. Okay, perfect. Good evening, everyone. And again, thanks for joining us. As she said, I am Patricia Townsend. I'm the coordinator at the Witted Preschool and part of the Department of Office of Early Education. Um, so one of the great things about Durham Public Schools is that we understand one size does not fit all when it comes to student learning. So differentiation is a part of what we do on, on a daily basis. And differentiation, that just means your child's instruction will be tailored to build upon their current knowledge and skills. Each classroom provides a loving and caring environment. Schools are prepared to serve students whether they are excelling or need more support. Each school has an academically and or intellectually gifted or also known as AIG specialist who serves all kindergartners and collaborates with the teachers to provide advanced learning opportunities. Each school also has an exceptional children's department, which delivers specialized instruction should your child be identified as a student with a disability. Next slide, please. Here are some ways to support your child and connect with your school. Um, read to your child every day. Research shows that reading to children builds their vocabulary and develops a love for reading and books. You never have too many books. Communicate with your child's teacher. Um, we encourage you to establish a communication system with the teacher to support your child at home and share concerns if needed. There are several ways for you to provide parental input and stay engaged. Some are listed here such as volunteering at your child's school. If you want to volunteer, there's an online registration process for all um, volunteers in Durham Public Schools that must be completed prior to working with children. And that's safety first for everyone. Attend school meetings and events. Join the school improvement committees. Attend family academy events. The school needs parent input to inform improvements and decision making. So we would love to have you engage, highly engaged. Share your talents and skills within the classroom or the total school community and make learning fun. Take advantage of learning opportunities in the community and everyday activities. Next slide, please. Durham Public Schools has created several informational videos for our kindergarten families. These videos contain important information on several topics. Some examples, which you can see on this slide. More videos will be posted right up until kindergarten begins and will tackle topics such as child nutrition, transportation, and health and safety. Please visit this page to view the videos and learn more about the kindergarten experience in Durham Public Schools. Next slide, please. Finally, if you have not already done so, please make sure you enroll your child for destination kindergarten in Durham Public Schools. It's really easy to do. The first thing you'll need to do is complete the online enrollment, which you can find on our DPS website. So these are the steps. You'll need to upload some items when enrolling, including birth certificate, um, proof of domicile, and some examples are a current lease, a deed or mortgage statement, um, current tax statement, property tax statements in the name of parent or legal guardian are acceptable. You could also use three consecutive months of rental receipts um, and one current utility bill, and that's gas, water, or electric. Again, in the name of the parent or legal guardian. Um, you could also use a housing and urban development statement in the name of the parent or legal guardian, um, an affidavit, declaration of residency, completed at the Office of Student Assignment. Immunization records will be needed and the help assessment form also. Um, so these items, this, our enrollment portal is now online. 
Um, you can upload all the documents. Should you need assistance with um, the enrollment process, please reach out to our Office of Student Assignment and the number is on the screen for you, 919-560-2059. And if you need assistance in Spanish, you should dial 919-560-2559. Thank you. Don't forget to say yes to DPS. That's very important. I'll turn it back to you, Katie. Thank you for that DPS. And now we will transition to Book Harvest. Uh, we have Wilma here. Um, she is the pre-K and K transition coach. And so she will talk to you about everything literacy. And Wilma, we will now turn it over to you. Awesome, thank you, Courtney. Um, hey y'all, I'm Wilma. Um, like Courtney said, I'm the pre-K and kindergarten transition coach on the Book Babies team um, at Book Harvest. And I'm gonna give you some tips around literacy. Next slide, please. So I'm just gonna start off with a little bit of context around literacy development. And um, the foundation of literacy is language development. Um, so before children can learn how to read, they learn how to talk and how to use language. And um, there's probably a lot that you are already doing at home to support your child's language development and setting them up to be successful readers. So it's not just all about reading books, but it's also about having conversations, talking, singing, and playing together um, are all important. And in terms of getting ready for school and to become readers, also having that daily reading routine, um, like Ms. Townsend suggested in her slides as well, um, is super important. Um, and when I'm talking about reading at home and language development, I am talking about um, developing the home language. So the language that you're most comfortable with at home, um, that is an important language to develop. Even if it's not English, it will support literacy development in English for the child to develop their home language. Um, yeah, so next slide, please. Sorry, I'm toggling between the two screens. Um, so in terms of developing language, some things you can do at home uh, to support your child's language development. Um, this is a really great age because kids are using language socially. Um, they're using it in play, resolving conflicts. They're using about 800 words um, expressively. They understand and know and internalize a lot more than that. It's about how many words of working vocabulary they have. They can answer and ask simple questions and they have enough attention span to have back and forth conversations and listen to short stories. Um, one of the ways we can build our child's vocabulary is to really engage with them in play, especially imaginary play, because it's such a great way to bring in new vocabulary um, and to build their emotional and social vocabulary, which is gonna be so important to their um, success as readers. Um, another way we can build our child's vocabulary is to continue to expand on what the child says. So even in a conversation, for example, if my daughter walks up to me and said, wear a dog, I could say, where's the dog? Oh, look, she's running around in the backyard on top of all the green grass. Um, so I could give her a simple answer. I could expand my answer to really um, give her more vocabulary to work with. Um, next slide, please. In terms of reading um, at Book Babies, we use dialogic reading strategy, which is an evidence-based um, interactive shared picture book reading practice that promotes language development and early literacy skills. Um, and the focus of dialogic reading is actually the conversation around the book. So reading with dialogic reading begins before you even open the book and it continues after you read the last word of the text. Um, with this strategy, there's actually less of an emphasis on the text and more on the storytelling components, um, using the pictures and asking questions to really tell the story together. Um, the goal of this is for the child to be really engaged as a reader and as a storyteller, for them to really see themselves 
as an active participant in the story. Oops, uh, next slide, please. Um, I will share a link of where you can kind of go more in depth into the research of dialogic reading or even, even more um, in depth strategies. Um, but in terms of tips, you can walk away with today and start using tonight with your child when you're reading a book. Um, I'm sharing these four. So like I said, with dialogic reading, reading starts before you even open up the book. You're asking questions before, during, and after reading. Um, throughout the story, asking open-ended questions that invite conversation. Um, we're really trying to bring the child into the book um, and see themselves as part of it. Um, you can also make connections to the child's life. Um, if there's something, an activity is happening in the book that you and your child do, make that connection for them. And also um, making connections in real life to stories that you enjoy. Um, for example, I got to go to the zoo with my daughter um, a couple of weeks ago, and she loves that book, Good Night Gorilla or Good Night Zoo. Um, that we got in the mail from Dolly Parton. And so when we got to see the chimpanzees and the gorillas, I brought up the story and we had a fun time sneaking around and talking about all the animals at the zoo. Um, and then a tried and true method for engaging kids in stories is using animated expressions, gestures, silly voices, really having fun with it because we're modeling that enjoyment of books, that love of reading with our child, and you know, when our child sees us enjoying the story, they begin to really enjoy the activity too. They start to think, I love reading with my parent. I love reading time. Um, and that's a really important aspect of their literacy development that they love reading and that they love books. Um, with asking questions, I do wanna say, you know, if that's something that's new to you, um, if your child doesn't answer the question right away, or if they never give a response to the answer that's that question, that's totally okay. Um, you can pause and then give them an answer and start a conversation with them. Or even if they say, I don't know, maybe you ask them, what's your favorite dress in this book? And they say, I don't know. I don't have a favorite dress in this book. That's totally okay. Take that and give them an answer and then continue that conversation. Again, the goal is just to start a dialogue around the story and for them to see the for them to see themselves as part of it. Next slide, please. Um, another important component of literacy development at this age is um, choosing books that kids love. So at Book Harvest, we do have a mirrors and windows philosophy around um, book access and book ownership. And um, we want kids to relate to the books that they, um, that they have access to. Um, so those are the mirrors, the ones they see themselves reflected in. And then we know that kids are also interested in learning about different and new worlds. Those are the windows. Um, it's important to keep in mind those high interest stories, though classics that kids always seem to love, um, Dr. Seuss's Silly Rhymes, um, you know, with slightly older kids, you know, I don't think Diary of a Wimpy Kid will ever be off of any bookshelf ever. Um, and then also just thinking about our child, what, what do they love to learn about? What do they love to do? Um, those are great topics and books to start with if um, you're not sure where to start with your child. Um, and, you know, I think it's really for families, there might be this pressure before kindergarten for their kids to know the alphabet and know letter sounds and have a little bit of phonics um, background with them. And that's great. But I think um, really our role as parents is to develop our child's um, love of learning and love of reading. And then when they get to school, the teacher is going to take that foundation and use it to motivate the child to learn how to read. Um, and I think that that love of reading and that motivation to read um, is really the important part for us to do at home. Um, yes, and not only sharing, finding books that your kids love, but also sharing books that you love. This is a great way to model that love of reading for them. If you have a book or a story that you were told as a child and you love it, share it with your kid. They're gonna see, wow, my, my mom, my dad really loves reading. I love reading too. 
Um, next slide, please. So I am gonna share, or at the end of this uh, workshop, I think there will be uh, literacy tips that we actually use in our book babies programs shared with you all in Spanish and English, and it will have um, a list of tips to look over. And I just encourage you to read over those um, and choose two or three that you wanna work on for a couple of weeks. Um, and then check back in, see how you did, choose two or three new ones. I think in terms of those tips, the most important one, if you don't already have a reading routine at home, um, is to try to establish that daily reading routine. It's gonna help so much with the transition to kindergarten. Um, in a lot of cases, the main homework your child will receive as a kindergartner is to read at home every day. And so in kindergarten, that means it's your homework too. You're gonna be with you, reading with your child every day. Um, so already setting up that time, protecting that time, um, and just having that ready to go for the school year is gonna be so helpful and something that they start to look forward to every day. Um, next slide, please. And uh, last but not least, if you're looking for books or you're looking for new books, um, we do have them at the Book Harvest office. Um, they are available outside 24 seven on book stands. We are looking forward to the day when we can reopen the office and really um, just enjoy kids choosing books inside the office again. Uh, but for now, they're outside. They're available in Spanish and English. Um, the address is on that slide. And on the tip sheet is also my contact information. Um, so if you have any questions about book harvest, book babies, um, or just anything that I went over this over today, um, feel free to send me an email. I'm happy to talk more about it. Um, yeah, that's all I have for today. Um, I hope it's helpful. <laughs> Great, thank you so much for all the presenters so far. We are gonna take a quick little break to do a raffle. Um, and so I have something on my computer where all the participants are entered and we are going to shuffle it and um for our first raffle the winner is Bettina Hartgrove Bettina yes I see you on the um see you on the participant list so we will follow up an email um thank you so much for being here and we have a gift card for you so congratulations fantastic all right And now we will transition to Village of Wisdom. Uh, you all will hear from uh, Taylor Weber Fields, who is the Associate Director of Parent Leadership and Development at Village of Wisdom. Taylor, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Courtney. And um, I would echo that. Thank you, everybody who's presented. I'm learning a lot over here. Um, and so good evening, everybody. My name is Taylor Mary Weber Fields. I am, as was stated, the Associate Director of Parent Leadership and Development at Village of Wisdom, um, or I sometimes go by the Black Genius Conjurus. Um, and we'll hear a little bit more about Black Genius as we go. But um, Village of Wisdom, we are a community of Black Genius protectors. Um, so we partner with families and community to protect the intellectual curiosity and racial identity of Black learners. Um, and I'm ready for the next slide, please. Thank you. So as we go through the next couple of slides, um, you don't, you know, you may or may not know what Black Genius is at this point. Maybe you have an idea. But if you had to, you know, if you had to describe Black Genius as a fruit, what fruit would it be? Okay, so just hold that. Um, think about it. Um, and I'll come back to that question. Um, thank you. We can go on to the next slide. 
So village of wisdom, right? There's, there's, a, there's an issue out there. Um, and you know, what's great about this time period that you all have is early learners and entering kindergarten is that you can kind of get ahead of some of the systemic issues that are out there. Um, and namely systemic racism is one of the things that we, you know, as, as well-meaning as we are, there's still some things in place that kind of keep our black and brown learners from, from not thriving as well as their white peers. Um, and so at Village of Wisdom, we believe that all children are born with gifts, skills, and talents. You know, it's their genius. Um, but because of those systemic barriers, um, such as, you know, the school to prison pipeline, I know folks hear a lot about that. Um, when we also talk about like what parent engagement looks like at schools, just there are different barriers that are sta that stand in the way of the full realization of this Black genius. Um, and so because of some of those things, oftentimes, Black children, Black families are kind of left out of the conversation and what it actually means to close the quote unquote achievement gap. Um, and we would say that it's not actually an achievement gap, right? Because that would say, you know, the that language suggests that there's something wrong with the children that they can't achieve. Um, and so Village of Wisdom seeks to, to shift that gaze onto the systems and the barriers that actually create that, that under, that really is an under education of Black students. Um, and so we can go on to the next slide. So Village of Wisdom, we exist to liberate and protect the intellectual curiosity and positive race self-concept of Black learners, i.e. Black genius, by co-creating culturally affirming learning environments. Um, so before we go to the next slide, and I give it away, um, so, so when we think about Black genius, what were some of the fruits that y'all came up with? Um, you can drop them in the chat. Uh, and I know I don't have a whole lot of time, but I'm just curious to see what kind of fruits y'all may have come up with. Ooh, a passion fruit. Okay, that's new. Avocado. Okay. I've never gotten passion fruit before. So I'm not even trying to picture a passion fruit. I'm not sure. Avocado, that's also new. Does anybody care to just share a little bit about why they chose that fruit? I will. I was just thinking of passion fruit because I was thinking of the passion that so many of the um, young black students that I work with carry for um, changing the world and for, you know, uh, yeah, transforming, transforming the world that they're entering into. So that's why I was thinking passion. Awesome. I love that. Thank you, Lo. Thank you. Mercedes, did you want to share a little bit more about the avocado? Yes. I think the avocado to me, you know, that out, that outer part is rough. It's really actually very strong as a fruit, but once you go in and you dig in, you find just the, the beauty of it, the smoothness of it. And it has a really, really strong core. Mm. It's, I, I will, you know, and, and it's nutritious and it's everything. So. Oh, awesome. I love that. I think that's going to be my new favorite fruit. I love the avocado. I actually love avocado. So that was cool. I love just all of that. So thank you both. Thank you both so much. Right. So, you know, as, so as, you know, as even with both of these fruit, right, just thinking about like the richness of our students, right. Um, and, and all that they can offer and, and, you know, children deserve to express their full genius. And so what are the conditions for that to happen? We have an idea. So we can go on to the next slide. Thank you. So what is Black Genius? Um, so just a quick little story. So in the very early years of Village of Wisdom, um, we spent time with parents. It was over about like a 10 week period. And we had this, uh, uh, a, a workshop. It was called the village, the family learning villages. And then what we did in those family learning villages was really sit and listen deeply to what black parents had to say about what they were experiencing in the school system, right? So we didn't go off of what the data said or what researchers were saying. We wanted to actually go proximate to the issue. So we sat with black parents and you know, after we heard some themes, there were some themes that came out of out of what black parents were saying. And so we were able to distill the feedback that we were getting, pair that with some research um, around racial identity and, and education um, and distill those into six elements. So when we're talking about black genius, as we're talking about black learners and the infinite wisdom that they hold. But when we think about those conditions in a learning atmosphere, we determine that 
these six elements are really important for Black learners to thrive. So one of the first things, and this was um, mentioned earlier in one of the presentations, was just around like interest awareness, right? Like what is Wilma was speaking about? Like when you're when children are engaging with their books, is it a book that they're interested in? Is it a subject that really resonates with them? Um, so interest awareness is one of the things that we really try to um, impress and, and making that a, a curiosity within school systems, not just assuming uh, what children should be interested in. Um, then secondly, we have selective trust. So one thing that we, you know, we really want um, educators and, and we want educators to know is that like trust is a process. Um, it's not something that is just conferred onto you because, you know, I'm the teacher, you're in my classroom, you should trust me. No, we really want folks to really think deeply about what that means to really build trust with a student. Because when a student feels like they can't love or they can't trust, they're not, they can't learn, right? You know, when you have to be in an atmosphere where you're trusting someone to take that step and, you know, answer that question or go that extra mile, right? So selective trust is really important. We also talk about racial pride. So um, what I love about the, the you know, you know, something that Wilma was take, was talking about with mirrors and windows is that the mirrors part, right? Like the reflection. Um, and so oftentimes in learning, um, in learning environments, black students aren't in, you know, aren't uh, presented with their likeness, with their image, um, or even like curriculum that supports a, a deeper learning or understanding of, of their history and culture. Um, so we feel like racial pride is really important. Um, we also think social justice is a really important component, right? So passion fruit, I love that, Lo, when you were speaking about, you know, the students having this drive and passion to change the world. They deserve to know that they can, right? So the conditions that they're given, they should know that they're active, they're active participants in their environment and that they can actually, they can realize those dreams that they have for their community. So we always want, um, we always want our children to know that they can also be a part of the change. Um, multicultural navigation is also a really important component of, of uh, culturally affirming learning environments, right? So, you know, we all have a culture at home that we don't necessarily take into our professional settings or our classrooms, so on and so forth, right? Um, but we don't, but that culture isn't bad because it isn't, it doesn't represent the majority, right? So we just, we want, to, you, we want our students to feel empowered to bring their full selves, to bring their culture with them into learning environments, right? And also learn about others. So, you know, the, the way the world is situated, there's, you know, we're starting to get a lot more affirming images and a lot more affirming stories about black families. Um, but it, but you know, sometimes there's this phenomenon, it's called stereotype threat. Um, if others have, if folks have heard of it, and basically it's this idea that, you know, the the, the experiment that goes with it is that if a child, if a child marks off their race before they take a, a test, that it actually lowers their score. So, you know, so children are making meaning of race at very early ages. And so we just want children to feel confident as they navigate other cultures um, that they can bring that with them. Um, and lastly, a can-do attitude, which is we also refer to as a growth mindset. So basically it, that that is also, that is just about our children staying motivated and really understanding what it looks like when a child is, you know, when a student is, frustrated or having challenges and encouraging them that, you know, this isn't the end all be on, right? We're, we're adults and we're still learning. We're going to be learning every day. And so just reminding our students that um, mistakes aren't really mistakes if you can learn from them. Um, and so that's another component that we feel is really important and um, not feel, we know is really important um, in, in learning environments for our Black learners. Um, and so related to this, I will, you know, I will make sure this gets to be a part of your follow up, but we have a black genius profile that will actually capture all of these elements for black learners right so there's for each of these elements there's a set of questions that you can access and fill out and it will come out in this nice pretty little profile that you can then go and present to your child's um, your child's teacher and say you know hey, this is my child, these are the things that they're interested in so basically it's like a yeah, it's, it's almost, I don't know, one of the ways I've referred to it is like a racialized learning profile. And it just says, you know, these are all the ways that you can reach my child and, and really get the best of them. Um, so you don't have to make assumptions about, about my son or my daughter, right? I'm giving it to you straight up. Like this is who my child is. Um, and with the profile, it's an ongoing process. We encourage folks to, to fill out the profile once a year because something's going to change in there, um, especially around like interest awareness and just different things that our children are learning. We encourage folks to let that be a continual process. Um, and we can go to the next slide. 
And so lastly, I just wanted to end with an invitation. Um, so excited to be here um, at this presentation. Y'all have been trying to get on with the partnership forever. Like, y'all, we, we, we really want to, we want to connect tools. So when we got the call, we were so excited to be a part. Um, and so we have, um, so like I was saying, we have the Black Genius Profile. And, you know, maybe you'll look at it and everything doesn't click for you. Join Wisdom Wednesdays. So this will be a weekly session that we'll have where we're actually going to go deep and we're going to take um, a deep dive on each of the elements. And you'll be in the company of other Black families struggling with some of these issues or questions. It'll be a space to exchange that wisdom um, and just think about how you're living Black genius in your daily life. And another invitation um, is, um, so part of the work that Village of Wisdom does is, you know, we talk about culturally affirming learning environments, but then we also provide the tools to create those environments, right? Um, and all those tools come from parent wisdom. So we learn from parents like y'all about what's needed in the schools. And so we just recently completed um, one of our research processes and the outcome is gonna be a digital learning kit, but we need folks like you to test it out for us. So if you're interested in trying our tools out, um, our, you know, our next tool that we'll be launching out into the world, please sign up. I'm using this link right here and you can get on and learn more about what we're doing um, and help us to protect Black genius. And um, I think that's all I have for today, but thank you again so much to the partnership for inviting us. And with that, I'm, I will pass to the next person. Thank you so much. Um, for all of that and all the tools and just talking about the of wisdom and black genius. And ooh, I'm just so excited about all the stuff that we're hearing tonight. And so now our final presenter will be um, Mercedes from the DPS Multilingual Resource Center. So Mercedes, um, the floor is yours. I think you're muted, Mercedes. <laughs> Sorry, I was so excited about all of the presentations. I was really, really inspired. <laughs> I forgot to unmute. Hello, I am Mercedes McCurley. And I was just saying that, how do I follow Taylor? You know, how do I then talk about identity and how do we form our identity and how our identities are. I Sometimes I want to say are taken away and reshape as we enter the school system. As I talk about children of color because I include my brown children. <laughs> so um, I just want to give you, you could Go to the next slide, please. How did I, how did I become Mercedes McCurley? As an adult, that is not my given name, but as an adult, you know, for females in particular, we marry and society tells us, you know, to take our husband's name as we can, we can go deep on that, but I'm not going to. Uh, I chose the McCurley because I actually loved it the curly, the curly hair. So it was actually a decision that I, I, I made personally as an adult, but my given name is Maria Mercedes Jaramillo McCurley. Sorry, Miller. <laughs> that was my given name. And when I entered into the United States culture as an adult, I became Maria. Everything else went away. So I became one more Maria. Culturally, all of my sisters, myself, my mom, we all Maria's because my grandmother, very Catholic, we all had to have Maria as our first name. So in that process, as an adult, I made some decisions. You know, I am going to introduce myself to the world as Mercedes McCurley. And I made that choice. Our children, as they enter kindergarten, don't have those tools don't have that voice and they lose their names. Their names have way cultural within our families. They, that's who they are. When somebody takes my name away, they're taking a really, really 
important part of who I am. And our children, and I, I, I live that every day when I'm interpreting for parents, the teacher is talking about a child and the parent is saying a different name. And many times I go in the middle of the conversation, I go, okay, hold on just a second. Are we talking about the same person? So becoming Mercedes McCurley, I did it because as an adult, I made some choices, but it's very important that as parents, we, again, give, communicate, and we can go to the next slide. We communicate who our children are. So we are going to do a really, really quick, um, a quick activity. So if you have a piece of paper, you can write it. If you don't have a quick piece of paper, then you can write it on the chat, um, cause that way we can see it. But what I want you to do is think about your child's name, an adjective, a word that will describe your child. And I want you to do with the first letter of their name because that's also a literacy activity so that they actually, so your child's name, an adjective that describes them. And then think about when you see your child How would you, like I always, when I look at my, right now is my grandchildren, I think about paleontologists. Oh my God, he's gonna be a zoologist. He's gonna be a chef. He's gonna, so take one minute. If you wanna turn your camera off, if you wanna close your eyes, if you want to do however you want to do that process and think about your child that is going to enter kindergarten and Think of those two words that you will use to describe them. So we're just gonna take maybe like 30 seconds. I don't know how I'm doing with time. So anyone wants to, I can see the chat. Um, oh, I love that. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and John, jovial, Elijah, exceptional, and an engineer, you know? So, <laughs> oh. <laughs> That one, that one. <laughs> Ice cream shop owner. <laughs> so as we take that time and we can go to the next slide, please. And actually Taylor, I am going to change this one to introducing my five-year-old genius to the world. <laughs> I, was, I was smiling as you were talking. And I think that is a responsibility, be through an agency, be through someone. But I think as parents, we have the responsibility to introduce our child to the world. They don't always at that age have the skills to do it themselves. And as children of color, we need, it is our responsibility to do it for them at that age. And so that we can present them, we can let them know, you know, how bright, intelligent, curious they are. We also need to let them know that they have a lot of feelings, you know, they come with feelings, they come with, you know, and, and I'm thinking when I was writing this one, it's about my, my grandson, you know, the perfection and that frustrates him. So when he is drawing, if he's not like he's visualizing it, he throws fits, okay? And I don't want him perceived at school as being rebellious. 
instead of frustrated, you know? I don't want when he gets so quiet to be seen, oh, he must, he must not speak English. No, he's not interested in what you're teaching right now. But if you talk about wildcats, that child is just going to start talking and then you can. So this is what I, I will give to you as advice. Take time, you know, take some time in an evening and start writing about your child. Start writing. And then it can be a short paragraph. It can be a, a letter, but as you take school supplies, the vaccination form, the school, also take that letter, that paragraph to your child's teacher, to the principal, to the counselor, share your child with the world so that they understand them and they learn to love them like Thank you. I'm honestly blown away. I I truly have enjoyed listening to all of these presentations. I don't have any children. However, I feel very empowered. Um, I hope that everyone that's present, families, community members, whoever, I hope you all enjoy these tools as well and will be able to utilize these whether in your personal life or spread them to the families that you work with every day. Kudos to everyone. I, I just have to say, I truly enjoyed all of that. Um, so of course, after this presentation, you all will receive a DPS kindergarten registration information um, from DPS um, and Jones Partnership for Children has also created materials for you all as well. So you receive that. You will also receive book Harvest Goal Sheet and developmental tips and Village of Wisdom's Black Genius Tool, as Taylor stated. And I believe we have the last raffle of the night. The last raffle of the night. It's gonna be the oh, lucky winner. I wish I should have a drum roll sound, but I do not <laughs> drum roll. Ah, da, da. Erica Vincent, Erica. Yes, I see Erica's name. Well, congrats. <laughs> There's Erica right there. Thank you so much. Ooh, 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 ooh. Fantastic. We'll be in touch with our winners to follow up with that gift card. Um, perfect. Thank you so much. All right, last poll. This pretty much wraps up everything. And then we will have about 10 minutes for a question and answer session. Um, so Katie, if you don't mind launching that, it's 10 questions. Once again, we really, really appreciate it. If you all complete it, this will help us um, plan our next kindergarten information sessions. Um, it, your feedback is extremely valuable. We just want to know how you feel tonight after hearing the presentations. Are you more knowledgeable about programs? Just to give us feedback on what we could work on for next time. So while you're completing that poll, I will just um, let you all know about a few upcoming events that we have. Um, coming up, we're, of course, enrolling for Early Head Start and uh, Pre-K. You can visit our website for more information. Also, um, Durham's Partnership for Children is hosting a roll-up and enroll event on Saturday, May 22nd from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. That will be held at 1201 South Briggs um, Avenue. This is an opportunity for uh, parents to either start their early head start pre-k applications or either provide missing documents um, this is to be considered for during public schools private sites and head start so if you have an outstanding application you want to submit your documents you don't want to upload it that's completely fine you can come to this event and we will help you finish that application also uh, the partnership will be hosting take care tuesday on tuesday may 25th from 1 30 to 2 30 p.m. Uh, join us to hear from uh, Shakima Crawford, who is our Early Head Start Director, and Jamika Wells, who is the Pre-K Program Coordinator. Uh, we will talk about everything you need to know, almost, almost everything, um, about Early Head Start and Pre-K. So if you have any questions, feel free to um, join. I 
we'll drop the registration link in the chat, but we'll talk about eligibility, how to apply, where to go to apply, um, program fees and more, all of the good stuff that you need to know. And that's all the information that I have. I guess we can transition to the Q&A session. Um, I'm not able to see the chat right now, but if anyone wants to come off mute and ask their question, that's fine as well. I guess we'll leave the poll open for maybe about 30 more seconds. So please get your votes. Well, your survey questions in. And I will stop sharing so I can see everyone. Katie, I'll go ahead and end the poll. I think we have majority of the votes. Okay. All right, time for questions. Does anyone have a question that they need answered? Just pulling up the chat box. We did have one parent submit a question in the Google form. Um, this would be for DPS. Um, I already registered my child for kindergarten, but I haven't heard back. Do I wait or register my child again? No, if you've already filled out um, the online application in, in the portal, um, then you should be all set. Just upload your documents and your school will contact you um, at some point when they're having some open houses and parent nights and those kinds of things. But if you've already filled it out, you are good to go. You don't have to fill it out again. And I would just take a moment. There are several people who have started an application, but haven't hit that submit button yet. Um, if you could do that as soon as possible, that would be great. It helps us know how many teachers will need at each school. Um, so we can make sure that, you know, your child is assigned to a, a classroom that's not too big. And it also helps us get a list of parents so that we can do those things that Courtney was talking about earlier, popsicles on the playground and, you know, open house nights and those kinds of things. We don't want you to miss anything. We want you to be able to come in, meet the other kids, meet the teachers. And so the sooner you get registered, the sooner we have um, a list of parents to contact. I do have another question that came in um, prior to the event. How do I apply for before and after school? Go ahead, Lo. I was, I was just gonna say, um, so that information, um, you can find two places. You can find it on the DPS website and I'll look it up and put it in the chat right now. And then there'll also be information at your child's school um, to register them for that particular location as well. And typically, again, if your your school will have open house nights, those kinds of things, typically there's someone from before and after school there that you can ask questions to. Um, so stay tuned for those events, but certainly our website is a wealth of information. We also have um, vid the videos that I mentioned. Um, there are going to be some that deal with before and after school, and there'll be one about nutrition and those kinds of things. So watch for that information as well. I was just about to mention K Readiness Camp, but I see that you answered that in the chat. Yeah, I put that summer learning page there in the, the link for... Um, Pre-K two, I correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not open yet for everybody quite yet. Correct. It will be opening next week. Right now, it's only open to students that are currently enrolled in our preschool classrooms. Um, but if there are available openings, which it looks like there will be, um, we will put that link on our website starting next week. It's a Google form. You just go in and put in your information. And until we're at capacity, uh, we're good to go. And it will be at the same sites as the K-5 camps. So we'll have 10 different locations. So we're going to assign 
you know, as close to home as possible. We provide transportation. It's all free. And Breakfast, lunch, lunch and lots and lots of playtime, lots of hands-on activities this summer. Yeah. And it's going to be really fun. I mean, we, we strive to make it really fun for our kids because we know it's summer. Um, so they will have lots to do and um, learn a lot. Does anyone else have any questions? Any parents on the call, any community partners on the call that have any questions? If not, Sue or someone from DPS, if you all could reiterate one more time, uh, what are the requirements for K registration as far as documents needed for application? Sure. So um, you have to provide proof of domicile and there is a list on our website of the items that you can use. Um, typically people use a lease or um, a tax statement with your address on it uh, or a bill such as a utility bill like water, electric, those kinds of things. And one of the questions we get a lot is what happens if I'm not the homeowner or I'm living with a family member? That's fine. There is a process that you can do where the person that you're living with signs that you are living with them and you can call the Office of Student Assignment and they will walk you through that. It's very simple to do. Um, so don't, don't worry about that. Um, the other piece is you need your birth certificate. You will be asked for immunization. You will be asked for medical information from your doctor, which is a health form, but those you have some time to get in. They're due within the first 30 days of school. What I would do is make an appointment now um, with your doctor or whoever you see to get that health form filled out because as you can imagine, as school gets closer, people think, oh, I didn't make my appointment and they get really, really busy. So, and also if it's going to be good, if you just had one of his, a doctor's visit two months ago, um, as long as it's within the year, it's still good. So you can use that information. Upload all the information. Can I add one more thing to that? Sure. Lots of community partners also have uh, pop-up clinics often to make Correct. sure that your students can have that. So if you don't have a regular doctor that you go to, um, just be on the lookout because lots of community partners will host um, pop-up events for that. Right, and some of our schools do that as well. So yes, another good reason to connect with the school. Um, so yes, get, you know, get it done, get that little submit button um, pressed so that we know you're coming because we want to be ready for you. Well, thank you so much. We literally have one minute to spare. Katie, do you have any closing words, remarks? Just, just a lot of gratitude. Um, yes. all these partners and collaboration and yeah, very grateful for you all and all the families and everybody on the line. It's good to see everybody tonight. Yes, yes. Thank you for joining in. We're saving the chat and we will for sure send out all the resources to everyone, partners and families. So once again, thank you all so, so much again for coming. Hopefully we will do this again. Um, and then we'll also send out well, the recording, yes, we'll be posted on our website and more than like, uh, likely our Facebook page. So thank you again. Everyone have a good night. It's Friday Eve. Have a good weekend. <laughs> See you next time. Thank you.